Hush. Thanks again for tuning in to another edition of Sanukas Roof Skills and Drills with the Quiet Storm Dojo. Today, January 13th, 2022, the anniversary of the birth of our teacher, our founder, Dr. Moses Powell. Brothers and sisters, I have a treat for you today. 10 years ago, on this very day, on Doc's birthday, I did my first interview and we answered a lot of questions. Who's Doc's number one? Who's his successor? What is the curriculum? What did Dr. Moses Powell want? A lot of, lot of great questions and answers. But mysteriously, the interview was killed. It was taken off the air. I don't know who had the power to do it, but Sinjukai.com did a lot of interviews with a lot of masters. But my interview was the only interview that was taken off the air. So one of my students who trained with us back then found it wise to record the interview on the CD. I don't know what possessed him to do it, but I'm so thankful that he did it because we just found the interview on CD. So I want to share it as my tribute to Dr. Moses Powell. On January 13th, 2012, I give it to you today, January 13th, 2022. We started our interviews in 2020, and we dedicated our interviews to sharing knowledge to the up-and-coming Sanuka students, the up-and-coming masters, to share with them the history and the knowledge and the lessons from the students who were touched by Doc, who were taught by Doc, who loved Doc. In fact, we did such a great job that we even woke up those who weren't talking about Doc, but were more so talking about themselves. So today on Doc's birth anniversary, now that we've resurrected the interview, we want to resurrect the name of Dr. Moses Powell and Sanukas Ru, so the whole world will know the beauty of Sanukas. Enjoy the interview. Listen to it. It's a lot of information. I think you'll be pleased with it. Thank you. Push. Uh, and I, and I. Today we have a special guest, a good friend of mine, as well as a very good friend to the Warrior Within Dojo, uh, Professor James Sims. Uh, from the gym, how, Professor Sims, how are you tonight? I'm well, fine, sir. Thank you. Good, good, good. All right. Uh, well, you really don't need much of an introduction uh, because. If you know Doc, you should know James Sims because you're very close to, to uh, Dr. Moses Powell, uh, both on the mat and in and, uh, and life. Uh, so just tell our uh, listeners, uh, those that may not know you, uh, just you know who you are and uh, where you are, and uh, any uh, information that uh, people may need, need to know about you. Okay, uh, brother James, uh, I'm from the Philadelphia area. I, I work in Philadelphia. My dojo, Quiet Storm Dojo, is in Wilmington, Delaware, and also we yeah, have the uh, Philadelphia branch as well. Good, good. And uh, what's your website, James? Uh, Professor James, what's the website? The, web, the website is quietstormdojo.com and also drmosespal.com. It's D-R, Moses Powell, not D-R, period. Oh, thank you very much. All right, we're going to go right into it there. All right. All right. Uh, did you have a martial arts background other than Sumitra Jiu Jiu-Jitsu? And if so, what is it? But did you say, did, did I have a martial arts background before Sanukas? Or, yeah, other other than Sanukas. Oh, yes. And if yes. so, what is it? Uh, um, I come from a, a Jita Kwan system uh, founded by Grandmaster C.K. Kim out of uh, Seoul, Korea, and he spent most of his time in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I'm a student of Grandmaster uh, Rick Berry. He's also my uh, Koki Kai Aikido instructor. Okay, good, good. And uh, how did you come to know about Dr. Moses Powell? And when and where did you meet him? Uh, well, 
my, my instructor, uh, Grandmaster Rick Berry, uh, well, like most martial artists, I was a big Bruce Lee fan <clears throat> in the early, early 70s. And I patterned a lot of my ways behind what I saw in the movies. You know, all of us did that. And he was trying to break a certain back. So he tried showing me some films of uh, individuals like Jackie Chan at a very young age. But uh, Jackie Chan, in my opinion, he, he clowned around a lot. And I didn't like joking with my martial arts. I didn't like the comedy aspect. So because I was, uh, I guess, a, 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 a young militant, uh, you know, he came at me with the black martial artist because he figured because I'm a militant, that would get my attention. So he sent me down one day and he talked me, he told me about the seven masters of New York City. Uh, master uh, George Cofield, Master yes, uh, Thomas the Puppet, of course, uh, Master Ronald Duncan, and then he mentioned a man by the name of Powell. And he told me that he had taught me as much as he could, and I need to seek these individuals out. So, of course, you know, when you have an instructor, that's like a father figure to you, and you don't really want to hear that type of conversation. But as time went on and I became knowledgeable of Dr. Moses Powell or Master Moses or Master Musa, as they call him, in the the Nation of Islam, my curiosity grew. And all the old soldiers in the nation used to talk about Master Musa and what he could do at the bazaar in the uh, so-called Church Resurrection. So when I started to understand more about this man, I, I tried to seek him out. But when I attempted to find him in New York, everybody said he was in Miami. I contacted individuals in Miami. They said he was in Bermuda. And they said he was in Atlanta. Some people said he was in Chicago. And even they said he was dead. So at one point, I didn't even even think he existed until Stadium Day in Chicago, 1981. uh, At that time, it was Master Moses X. Powell. He and Grandmaster Anthony, Sheon Anthony X. Richards at the time, and a good brother who was a, a captain alongside of me out of New York City, uh, Brother Xavier, and another brother who I didn't know did a demonstration at Savior's Day. And I saw the doctor, and that's when I first met him. But unfortunately, he moved so fast to get out of there, and wherever he went, it took me many years to catch up with him. I finally found Dr. Powell in the early 90s, and he came to me, actually. He came to Philadelphia at 18th and Chestnut Street. And when I met him, all I ever desired to be was just a student. That's all I ever wanted, just to be a part of the Olympics and to be uh, trained by a great master who I respected. Hmm. Well, it's our audience that uh, the first time you ever saw a dark moon is the, uh, uh, at the, uh, I think you said, Savior's Day. Uh, what, what was it that caught, that caught your attention about Dr. Moses Paul? Well, first of all, his size. And, of course, <laughs> I must give credit where credit is due. He had uh, Grandmaster Anthony with him, and by Grandmaster Anthony being a smaller statue man like myself, you know, I was very impressed by his movement as well. But Doc, he was, you know, I've seen a lot of demonstrations. The guys go out there and they get into overkill and they board, they put this, the crowd to sleep. When Doc went out there, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Doc did approximately four, maybe five techniques. And when the crowd was at the height of their applause, he stepped to the side of the stage, he saluted them, and walked off the stage and left them wanting more. That's impressive. Wow. <laughs> I can only imagine. I can only imagine. And for those who are listening, if they go to uh, Quiet Storm Dojo on YouTube, they can see that same demonstration because I have it posted on YouTube. Just go to Quiet Storm Dojo or put my name in Professor James Sims and you'll get a chance to see Doc in 1981 along with Grandmaster Anthony. 
Oh. Yeah, actually, that's one of my favorite demonstrations or clips to Doc. Uh, I wish it was longer yeah. than that. Uh, but Doc, Doc did what in less than a few minutes uh, uh, some jujitsu techniques that just, just left me dumbfounded about how truly gifted this man was. So I'm just that for what you're saying. Yeah. And, I, and I, I, would, I, was, I, was, you know, I would strongly suggest or recommend that the listeners go, go to quietstore.com and, uh, and look at that clip if you want to see what a pure, a real snooker is. Go look at that clip. All right. How were you able to change and adjust to snooker's training? And did you have to start at white belt all over again? Well, it wasn't really a major change that I had to make because the system that I, I had come from was a very hard system. In fact, in the uh, late 60s and early 70s, when we fought, we didn't use pads and things of that nature. The most we wore, maybe, was a cup. Nowadays, when you see uh, martial arts fight, they have more helmets and pads and foot pads and shin pads. When we fought, it was bare knuckle and blood was drawn and it was a very hard, rigorous training. So when I uh, joined on into some looking, and Doc would take you through what we call torture drills, while he would sit there and laugh and crack jokes, and we would be out there going through the calculus. And he would be dying. I would always look across the room to the senior master. I wouldn't fall out until I saw one of them fall out. Because it was just that, it was very hard training. So it really wasn't a major difference in the training. However, the principle, I, I could never uh, use my uh, judoquan in the same manner as I did when I boxed. Doc, the way he taught, he taught you how to use your martial art in a real street application. And he did it with finesse, so it looked like it was a, a, a something rehearsed with a routine, but it was just mathematical with the way he taught. And that's why I think that's the attraction power of some of it, because it has a rhythm to it, but it's very effective. Mm. Yes, sir. Did you have to start back over? I mean, how, how, how when you came into the system, did, I know uh, for many, and uh, a lot of people, uh, they came in the system, uh, uh, let's say if they came in the system as a, a showdown or, or a black belt, that would allow them to uh, uh, keep on their belts and then, you know, uh, give them the knowledge that they needed for snookers. Uh, well, how, you, how, how did, it, did you have to start back over at white belt or that allow you to keep your uh, uh, black belt or whatever belt you had? Uh, no, sir. Um, I was willing and ready to put on a white belt. I was willing and ready to crawl no matter what because <clears throat> I wanted to look this. However, um, Doc did not require that of me. So what Doc did, he received me on the level that I was at and he built, he built from there. Mm. And if I'm not mistaken, there are a lot of, uh, um, Students that came in that way, some of them did not, but Doc permitted it with me. Mm. Yes, sir. When you came in, when you came on your knowledge, uh, let's see, I think the, uh, the system you studied before, uh, Doc didn't tell you to throw that knowledge away, did he? Did he, did he tell you to keep Oh, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Oh, no, sir. Oh, so. Doc taught this. Don't forget what you know. Hold on to it. Take what I'm giving you. Understand it and then apply it to that which you already have, and then it'll make you that much better. He called it giving you the icing to put on your kit that you already have. Mm. Oh, I like that. Mm. All right, uh, let's move on to our next question. What did you find different in Snookers? What did you find different in Snookers that differed with any previous training you have had? The flow. The flow was, was awesome. Um, because I have a strong foundation in basics and form and kata and all the stances and all the traditional martial arts, what Doc gave me was the understanding of how to use it but take away the hardcore rigid movement and just natural flow. For example, if I throw a punch, 
and I keep it out there and I'm tight, then there's no way that I can, at a split second, counter or block or shoot that same punch twice if I'm tight. So what Doc did, he taught you how to relax and flow and get inside, take care of your business, and get out. He taught you entries, and you can't be tight. You can't go in there and freeze and take a picture. You have to be able to get in, take care of business, and get out. Mm. That was the difference. That's right. The flow. Mm. Absolutely. All right. The next question. What is your present rank and title and uh, instruments for Uh, seven time, uh, professor, and set up his Oh, all right, professor, we're going to go into a, a few more questions here. Before we go any further, I'm going to read something uh, from the Noble Quran. Uh, and it's just something yes, very small, uh, but I think it's going to set the tone. All right, so the no- in the Noble Quran, uh, in the first story, in the 135th, First, uh, Allah says, O ye, O you who believe, then thou firmly for unjust for justice as a witness for Allah, even though it be against yourselves, or your parents, or your kin, be ye rich or poor. Allah is a better protector to both than you, so follow not your lust of your heart, least you avoid justice. And if you distort your witness or refuse to give it, Verily, Allah is well acquainted with what we do. All right. So in, in, in this verse, and I'm sure, I'm sure we don't need a, a tafsir on Quran or anything else. Uh, and I, the reason I wanted to say this verse is we're going to move into uh, some questions that some may find difficult. But I think, uh, as Allah says in, in, in Quran, uh, you have to be a witness even if it's against yourself for the truth, you know? Or your family or your team and be a witness for it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and proceed with the next series of questions. All right, uh, have you ever received rank? Have you ever received rank from any other superhero instructor besides Dr. Powell? And what is your position on this? <laughs> well, I- I'll answer you, but I want to tell you a story first. Yes, sir. When I was promoted by Dr. Moses Powell to go down, same night that Grandmaster Little John Davis, Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad, uh, Chief Professor Bill McLeod were promoted. <clears throat> I walked over to Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad and I congratulated him. And I said to him, Sir, I know that I am not the rank that God bestowed upon me. However, I will do everything that I can do to work hard and qualify myself to represent the rank that he bestowed upon me. And I'm not going to let him down. I'm going to work hard, obtain the knowledge and the wisdom, the understanding to qualify myself to represent the rank that he bestowed upon me. And Grandmaster Anthony looked at me and he said, Brother James, that's right, brother. We all need to do that. And when he said that, it was very profound because he was my senior. And we all looked up to him. And, you know, my position on that is, as far as receiving rank from others than some look at, I'll, I'll say this to you. There's a brother by the name of uh, Ali Muhammad in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, who was promoted to Grand Master by Doc. Not honorary, but... Uh, Grandmaster. In fact, um, I listened to um, a beautiful interview you did with uh, Dr. Phil Shadiq, who I respect a great deal. I, I really like him, and I love the seminars he do, does in Miami. <clears throat> uh, I believe someone asked him, was he the only person who received a doctorate from Dr. Moses Powell? And I believe the answer was to his knowledge, yes. A lot of people don't know that uh, Grandmaster Ali also on his certificate, it says doctor. Now, I can't tell you why, yes, sir. I can't tell you why 
That is, I can't even tell you why Doc gave the doctor to uh, Dr. Um, Shanique. However, I know he respects both of them and he loves both of them. I was present when he promoted Grandmaster Ali. So anyway, Grandmaster Ali contacted me after Doc departed and said he wanted to bestow a rank upon me of Grandmaster. And I told him, thank you, brother, but no thank you. Because number one, you're not my teacher. And I don't feel right receiving rank from anyone who hasn't taught me. Number two, the rank that I have from Dr. Moses Powell, I'm still working hard to qualify myself to represent that. And it's sufficient for me. And I can go to the grave with the rank that he gave me because as far as I'm concerned, I have rank from one of the greatest martial artists that ever walked the planet Earth. And I don't need any other rank. I was just happy to be a student of Dr. Allah blessed me to receive three promotions from Dr. Moses Powell. And I thank Allah for it. And I'm, again, like I told Grandmaster Anthony, I'm going to work hard to qualify myself. So I don't think it's wise for a student of Dr. Moses Powell who has damn right to receive rank from anyone unless it's their primary instructor and or someone who has been instrumental in your growth and development and to look at maybe. But for me to receive rank and accept it and promote it and advertise it would be saying that that which Doc gave me is not good enough and it's more than good enough for me. Mm. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And that actually leads us into my next question. All right, I was president in uh, 2009, when you, uh, Professor Ose and Professor Seifullah, were all promoted in Philly by Grandmaster McBride and Grandmaster Noel and the host of other senior instructors in Snookers, uh, Sokia Little John Davis was not happy at all about Professor Ose being promoted. And in the ballroom, he said he was not protesting you or Professor Seifullah, but he was in fact displeased with Professor Ose's promotion. Uh, why is that, Professor Sims? Well, first I want to address something. Um, there was another person who uh, wanted to promote me, and that was um, uh, Master Noel Arrington. And just like Grandmaster Ali, I told him, no, thank you, sir. I don't feel right receiving rank from anyone, and what Doc gave me is sufficient. Of course, if you know uh, Master uh, no, he blessed me out however. However, out of respect, and I didn't want to embarrass anyone, I went up there, I, I, I bowed, thank you very much, but nobody can say that I have ever called myself, advertised for myself, or required my students to call me Grandmaster. I've never, ever accepted nor promoted that type of rank. I would be a fool to do something like that. In fact, I'm against anyone receiving rank in that matter. And again, what Doc bestowed upon me is sufficient for me. And I'm still working hard to qualify myself. Um, the question about Grandmaster Little John was what, sir? Uh, he was, he was, uh, I was there. He was upset. With, uh, he wasn't protesting. He was upset about the promotion. And initially we thought he was upset about uh, you, Professor Seifalaw, and then, of course, uh, Professor Ose, who was uh, Shinan Ose at the time. Uh, but later on, we found that he wasn't protesting uh, you or Ose Falah, per se. He was protesting uh, Professor Ose's promotion. And I want to know uh, why is that? Oh, okay. Well, um, <clears throat> out of respect, you know, I don't speak for Grandmaster uh in John Davis, and it wouldn't be wise for me to attempt to um, answer a question that only really he can answer. I do know some of the history, and personally, I look at it as a, a case of uh, what goes around comes around. But again, Shiano Ose Jones, when the word went out that he was taking on the title of Soke, I called him. See, a lot of people hear things and, and, and they run around and gossip and black talk, I called Ose, 
And I asked him, oh, do me a favor, man. Don't call yourself so good. Dr. Stone, she high rank upon you. Hold that rank up and represent Doc and represent the rank that he gave you. Please don't call yourself so good because if you do, they're going to come after you. And brother, they all can claim you. Because let's face it, Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad is, is, is O'Shea's teacher. He can't deny that. So, uh, yeah, Grandmaster Anthony is his teacher, his primary teacher in some of these. Of course, Dr. Moses Powell came along and saw that which Anthony and uh, Grandmaster Bill did with that young brother, and he took it from there and blessed him with show die. Now, as Grandmaster Anthony would always say, Doc could do whatever he wanted to do. And he knew what he got nothing to say. But I told him, since you have rank from the doctor, hold on to that. Represent that rank. But please don't take on that so-called shit. But if you do it anyway, I will still respect you. However, if you come to my event, that's a salutist event, I will call you Chiha Osei K. Joe. And he and I have been all right with that ever since. Mm. But I'm I can't sure. yeah. speak for Grandmaster uh, Little John. Why? I mean, it's not why some of these people are And from, from what I understand, Grandmaster Little John will be on the show, and I'm sure he can answer that. But it's yeah, not, I can't, I can't speak for that. Because, you know, that as well is his teaching. Because Grandmaster Little John Davis is. Man, that's the Anthony's teacher. So, you know, Ose has to, he can answer that or maybe uh, man, that's the little job yet. I, I can't speak on it. Understood. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Hey, all right, let's move on to the next question then. It is said that you are one of the re- one of Doc's representatives, but that you are and that you are his dearest representative, and none were closer than you. In fact, you were Doc's front, side, and back. Now, this came from Doc himself. Can you please elaborate on this for our audience? Well, number one, number one being his, I'm sorry, number one being his representative, and then number two, because he had, you know, uh, he had, uh, I guess, another or a few more representatives, but you were his dearest representative. And this is quoting Doc himself. You were his, his dearest representative, and then, of course, that you were, he described you as his front, side, and back, and that was here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, uh, that Doc had to, uh, uh, is how Doc described him. So, go ahead and elaborate on that for us. Well, as far as me being a representative of Dr. Moses Powell, anyone who loves him and represents him and teaches his system and has students should consider herself his representative. So, yes, I am. I am his representative. I'm not his only representative. I represent him here in Philadelphia. And wherever I go, I represent him. And I represent him strong. I defend him. And that's who I am. And that's what I am. And as far as his dearest, is that what you said, sir? Yeah, his dearest. And his closest. I don't, I don't know, you know where you're getting that from. Um, I'm Doc's representative. Doc was, that was my man, you know. Um, I don't necessarily like all that other stuff. Now, he did make a statement in Atlanta, Georgia, that um, I was his front, his back, his left, his right, and in fact, I'm his brother. But he said a lot of other things about other people that same day. So let's give credit where credit is due, because this is not about Brother James. This is about Dr. Moses Fowler from the Kashrut. So what I'll do is say exactly what he said. He said, here today I have Professor Anthony. He's one of my top guys. And when you see him come out here today, you'll know why I say that. And I have Brother James Sims here from Chester, Pennsylvania called me a new addition to the family. He said, he's my front, he's my back, he's my left, he's my right. In fact, I love him. He's my brother. That's what he said. And then he said, we have Anton. And then he stopped talking. So it, 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 I don't, you know, I know he said that somebody brought it to my attention, but I don't 
I don't take it lightly, but I don't take it as it means I'm above anybody else or more special than anyone else. Was I close to God? Yes, I was. On and off the mat. I'm not going to deny that. But I wasn't the only one who was close to him. Mm. Uh, did Dr. ever point any successors to the Salubus Roof family and the system during this lifetime? And if so, who were they? And what happened that they were not in a position to take over after Dr. departed from us? <laughs> did Doc ever appoint any successors? No. Yeah, during his lifetime. Doc never appointed any successor. In fact, there are many people that will tell you when individuals had the nerve to even question him on that, some of them got blessed out. However, again, I must speak the truth regardless of the circumstance. Regardless of whom or what, give credit where credit is due. There are two individuals. He didn't call them his successors. But I'll tell you what he said. I was in the hotel room with Doc in the 90s, at the time when I did a lot of traveling with him. And he said these words. He said, a lot of people say that so-and-so is my number one. But I ain't never said it. This brother right here is my number one. And you need not look for another. And the brother that he was talking about was Grandmaster Kassad Kuhn. I was present. He was the fact he was talking to me. And Hassan was standing right next to him. I'm going to say it again so we won't get confused. He said, a lot of people say that so-and-so is my number one. But I never said it. This brother right here is my number one. And you need not look for another. And he was talking to me, pointing at Grandmaster Hassan Khalid. There's another mm-hmm. side to that story, but I'll, I won't get into that now. The next person, he said these words. And most of the stuff that I say, nobody can call me a liar. They're going to call Dr. Liar, because I'll tell you what he said. He said, concerning Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad, in fact, I'll tell you exactly how he did it. He's a black belt class in front of everybody. He looked at Anthony and said, who are you and what are you? Anthony just looked at him. And I can say this because I talked to Grandmaster Anthony about this. He said, who are you? Anthony just looked at him. He said, hey, don't worry about little John. He got his own thing to commit to you. I'm talking to you about some little history. You are so much of You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. I got your back. Doc talked to me before that day many times about Anthony. One time I said to Grandmaster Anthony, but he was Professor Anthony. I said, You know, brother, you're the physician assistant. And he said, Brother, when one is put with the information, they need to come to him, not put it out before the time is right. I said, Yes, sir. He promoted Grand, every, he promoted Grandmaster Anthony to Grandmaster, I believe, three or four times. And each time, I was blessed to be physically stressed. He, he promoted him the same night that he promoted me. Grandmaster Anthony promoted Grandmaster Little John. Uh, Grandmaster Bill he promoted him to Chief Professor the same night. The next time it was at Hillside Dojo, he promoted Grandmaster Anthony. Then I think the third time we were in Chicago, Illinois, in front of approximately 1,500 Muslim men. He stood Anthony up and promoted him to the 10th Don, Grand Master, and he told everybody, get behind him. He get behind He said, I'm not going nowhere, but you know, I'm putting him on front. So they're the only two individuals that I know of that Doc ever spoke of in that manner as far as uh, number one. Except that, mm. I don't know, some people may interpret it as number one, I don't know, but that's what he said. Mm. Yes, sir, I mean, that's the truth. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Has that ever put someone out of the, out of the Saluka family and allowed them back in? And are there any of them in good standings within the Saluka family today? Um, off the top of my head, I know one person that was out of the family and was allowed back in, <clears throat> and that's um, <laughs> A.K.A. Shaka Zulu Shabazz, better known as Professor Sefala. Professor Sefala was out of the family for a very pretty nice, lengthy time, but he was allowed to come back in. And when he came back in, he was in, he was under observation. I'll, I'll tell you that. But once he was observed, Doc gave him a green light, and Doc we promoted him, and Doc allowed him to do a lot of good things for him, and he is in good standings today. I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know of anyone else who was put out that was allowed to come back in. Somebody else we know, but I, I don't know. Yes, sir. Hmm. All right, Professor Jay, what is Smith's Root Jiu Jitsu, and what is Doc, Doc's vision for it and his family practitioner? <clears throat> So Lucas Wu Jiu Jitsu, as Doc would put it, is simplicity and survival. Of course, that's a very surface answer. But understand this, when, people, when, when Doc says simplicity and survival, he's not talking about surviving like going out in the woods, eating grass and trees and surviving. He's talking about surviving war life atmosphere, surviving in a war. In other words, having the spirit and the know-how to kill but in a more simple manner, direct to the point. So Lucas was given to us as an art for the dojo so that we can train and have discipline and things of that nature. But those of us who really know, so Lucas is win by any means necessary. And that means if it's a gun, a stick, a knife, a machete, whatever it takes for some Lucas warrior to be there. And he will win. Why can he be that? Everybody's not ready for that training and for the teaching. However, there are those who don't come to the dojo and train. But in the street, trust me, they will submit. As far as Doc's vision, you said? That's their vision for it. I, I, you know, <laughs> what Doc wanted to see with all of his children come together and train under the banner of Seleucus. That's what his vision was. That's why he called it the family of Seleucus. And that's why he instituted, he instituted the one finger raised up, representing the one God, Allah, the one system, Seleucus. And then you take your finger and you point it to your heart, which means you love Allah, we love the system of Salukas that he blessed us with. He wanted all of his students to come together and train together and hold that banner of Salukas up and be the family of Salukas and go out and spread it all over the world. That was his vision. Mm. All right. Professor, after, after Doc departed from us, Senior ranking instructors started calling for a change of the name Snookers and for a change in its public image due to Doc's, uh, let's say, tarnished image and the negative street lifestyle that Doc was accused of having. Can you elaborate on this for us? <laughs> well, and you know, that to be honest, as, I, as, as, a per, as a personal testimony, I've, I've heard people say this that the uh, 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 grandmasters and professors, uh, that they didn't change the name and things like this. So this is actually a, a, a personal question for me also. What are, you, what are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, let me say this to you. First of all, as far as I'm concerned, Dr. Moses Powell is the king of jiu-jitsu. He was the one who went to Aaron Banks and forced him 
to give the black man and the Latino man an opportunity to showcase his ability before the world as opposed to Orientals and Caucasians. He forced Aaron Banks to do it. Dr. Moses Powell, in my opinion, was a divine man and a very unselfish man. Dr. Moses Powell put out five DVDs representing celebrities. He could have grabbed any Uki, maybe one or two Uki, and did those DVDs and showcased his ability to the world. And so Lucas would have spread all over the country and all over the world, as it did. But he wasn't a selfish man. He was a man who loved his students, and he wanted to put his students out front and showcase their ability. So what he did, he took individuals like Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad, Grandmaster Bill, Ose, and others, and he put them in the film with him. And he stepped back and allowed them to do their thing so the world would see his students and know who his students were and see their ability. So everywhere these masters go, no matter where they go in the martial arts world, people bow down to them. Ose Grandmaster, Ose Professor, Ose Shihan. I saw you on take number one, two, three, four, five. You were awesome. Sometimes they don't even talk much about that. They talk about his students. Why? Because Moses Powell was not a selfish man. But if it wasn't for Doc doing that, nobody would know who his students were. And wherever they went, they would not be known, not, they wouldn't be respected, and they wouldn't be treated with the respect and admiration that they receive everywhere they go. Because Doc made sure that he made them, he, he what, how do you call it, he ordained them. So for anybody who wants to speak ill of Doc and his personal life, this is what I say. When you go to the bathroom, it don't smell like perfume. Did Doc do things that were, that was a uh, human? Sure he did because he was a human being. These masters who want to condemn Doc, I'm going to tell you what it is, brother. It's just like with Malcolm. When he wanted to disagree with his teacher and do his own thing, he started speaking ill of, of his teacher. And he called Elijah Muhammad a immoral man. He spoke about Elijah Muhammad's personal life. But for 12 years, he was a dear holy apostle who taught him everything he knew. But in order to justify doing his own thing and promoting himself, he had to bring his teacher down. So he wanted people to listen to him. So now all of a sudden, let's talk about Elijah Muhammad's domestic life and his personal life. So we want to make it look like he's not a divine man anymore. So anybody talking about let's change the name of Lucas, what the hell are you going to call it? Because everything you do is what he taught you. But now all of a sudden, he's not good enough for you to call his name and his system is not good enough for you to say it's a Lucas. Now it's some other rule or that rule or some other name, that is hypocrisy, that betrayal. And, and to me, you show that you really don't love the man, but you'll use his name to open up doors for yourself to line your pockets. Yeah, you may not have smoked weed or got high, but you chased women. You may not have got high, but you stole money. You may not have gotten high, but you were acting in some type of homosexual activity, but you want to throw stones at Moses Powell and not want to call his name and get rid of his name, the name of his system, and call it something else because you think you're his equal or you better than him, you ain't nothing without Moses Powell, whoever you are. You want to change the name, and all you do, no matter what you call it, is that which he taught you. Every time you take a man down to the ground, you popping his elbow across your knee and make me go on his stomach and you hit me with a double knee and rolling out. That's a look at and Doc talks to you. Mm. So I don't care two cents about these people who want to talk about Doc's life. What about your life? Stealing money, chasing women and men. Bunch of hypocrites, man. Self-righteous hypocrites. Want everybody to look at them going out here doing demonstration and people standing up applauding you and bowing down to you when, when they ask you about something you want to put Moses Powell behind your back and 
and represent yourself like you did it yourself. That's a damn shame. So I don't care two cents about what people say about God's personal life. Let's mm-hmm. deal with what he taught you. Because most of us are making money off of that which he taught. You can go travel around the country and people will bring you into their dojo and pay you just to see you do what Doc taught you. But you won't even call it something. Okay. You want to call it something else because uh, Doc did some bad things. Well, what the hell did you do? Yeah. Same way they did Elijah Muhammad is the way they did Doc. We're not going to call it the Nation of Islam no more. We're going to call it the World Community of Al Islam. We're going to call it the Malawi. We want to take the flag in Islam down and put the American flag up. It's the Muslim general, not Muhammad speak. Come on, man. You got to be kidding me. You wouldn't have no platform to teach you when it's the one for Dr. Moses Powell. Hell, mm. you got people out there that aren't even close to looking. They're stealing from God. Doing, they got other systems of jujitsu, but when you look at it, what does it look like? But he's a bad man. We don't want to call him St. Lucas because he did something wrong. Look at you do. Look in the mirror. You know you ain't no good when you do that. And I'm sorry I went off on that, but look, it had to be said. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, 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 and stay on that, that same point. What about, uh, the, you know, those people, like you said, they want to change the name and things like that. What about people that want to separate Dr. Moses Paul from St. Lucas? Like they say, well, you know, they say, well, uh, how, hey, Dr. how do you do that? Well, how do you I, I, make Dr. Moses Powell from Solicitor? It's not possible. It's not possible. He is Solicitor, like he said. I am Solicitor. Every day, Solicitor changes. You know, I, you know, I apologize. I know this is radio, but somebody got to stand up and tell the truth. Man. I'm tired of this. Somebody got to tell. Exactly. And that's what we're going The truth will hurt some. The truth will help some. The truth will make some cry, but it's going to be the truth. So speak the truth. <laughs> you know, Doc once said, man, people come and see me and learn from me and study under me while I'm in a wheelchair. How many of these people who want to change the name of St. Lucas can say that if they was crippled in a wheelchair, people would still come and learn from them? Think over that. Think about that. Take Dr. Moses Powell's name off your school. Stop telling people you train with him. Don't do any of his techniques and do whatever it is you say you got. And then tell me what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I have a thought for that. Absolutely. And, and anyone anyone that loves Dr. Moses Powell or a student of Dr. Moses Powell or a student of Lucas should have a problem with that. Absolutely. Getting back, let me get, get back to this, uh, this, this uh, question earlier. I just want to revisit that with our next question, actually. And you, when you mentioned Soki Hassan, you didn't want to go into details. Uh, I'll give you a second opportunity to think about it. Are you sure you don't want to go into details about the event uh, that, that uh, went so, out? Well, the, 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 the event wasn't the question. The, the question was, did Doc ever uh, name exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and which is all I can speak on is what I know. No, he did not name Mr. Lucas, and he got upset when people talked about Mr. Lucas as though he wasn't even here. But he did name two individuals at one time as his number one and those who he was putting out front. And mm-hmm. I named those individuals Grandmaster Hassan Ali, Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad. Yes. Now, by the name, like, let's say you know, Anthony Muhammad, for example. For example, uh, by St. Louis is number one. Uh, you, you're not saying that Doc was saying so you know, just turn, like, turn over the system to him. Uh, and you know, is that what you, that's not what you're saying about my number one. You follow me? Well, well, well let, me, let, me, let me say this. Let, no, I'm gonna answer you this way. When you say he turned the system over to him, that would say that Doc was retired. Doc said, 
said he wasn't retired. He was just putting Anthony out front. Let's face it, man, come on. I mean, this is just me talking. I, I can't tell you to, to agree with me. When I came into Philippi, when I first came into Philippi, there was nobody that I wanted to train with other than uh, Sean Anthony X. Richard. I was, I was trying my best to get close to that brother because from my vantage point, he had that flow that attracted me. I'm, I'm just being real. So, you know, the man has been the doc for quite some time. But I don't care if he was only the doctor for 15 minutes. He got that flow. He has the flow. So, yeah, I has the flow too. Don't get me wrong. You see him in the book? Man, come on. But see, for me, I'm not 62 or 16 like so yeah, I'm, I'm five, seven and a half. So when I just ran that Anthony move, you know, I can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. Anthony was like that. Yeah, yeah. Anthony was like that. Yeah. The brother is very smooth. He has a great form. And he helped me a long way. Right. I'm just going right to saying that. That is, uh, if you elaborate on that, as far as Brad Master Anthony is concerned, uh, let me say this, let me go on the record. Uh, I, I, when I see Grand Master Anthony, I, I think technically he is probably the best uh, I've seen uh, demonstrate this on the doubt call snookers. And uh, even when I watch his earlier videos and later videos, he still amazes me. So as far as a technician of this art and having knowledge of this art of snookers, uh, hands down, I, I completely agree with you, Professor. Uh, Grand Master Anthony Muhammad. Uh, has, 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 I don't want to say the best grip, but he has one of the best grips uh, as far as a uh, hold on this Sanuka system, the way he moves and the way he uses it. So I absolutely understand what you're saying. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go into our next question here. Uh, and uh, once again, this is a, this is a, you know, uh, this is a tough one, but these questions that need to be asked, these questions that need to be answered. Uh, there are some that say, and believe that Soki Little John is the heir apparent to Sunuka's room. Uh, and these gentlemen and people are uh, already interviewed, like uh, Grandmaster Anthony, uh, Grandmaster Logan. Uh, we know how they feel. And also, although I haven't interviewed uh, Grandmaster Bill McLeod, these are people that would agree, and a host of others. What are your thoughts on this, and what did Doc say to you about this? Well, before I answer this, I have to say this is that up there right here. Um, let me say this to you. When Doc first left, we were in Palm Bay, Florida, I believe it was. It was approximately 7 a.m. in the morning, and I ran into uh, Grandmaster Little John Davis, and we had a conversation. <clears throat> and he said to me, look, brother, everybody got to come on up under my umbrella, and anybody got problems with it, you know, we're going to go like we did back in the old school, and we're going to take them to the room and lock the door. And I said, it's okay. I said, it's okay, I understand how you feel, but those days are over, and this year, new young generation is not even trying to hear that lock the door, because just because you whoop somebody's ass don't mean that you're right. Just because you possibly to beat somebody doesn't mean that they won't fall. I said, these young brothers nowadays have no fear of that. They will take a gun and blow your brains out. So all that talk doesn't mean anything. And then he went and said it again. Dr. Bush. That's his opinion. That's his baton. Later on, I had a personal conversation with Grandmaster Little John when he was about to come to Philadelphia. And we had to discuss some things before he came because there were some issues that we had to address. But getting past that, he said something to me about setting up a seminar for him. And I said, well, sir, you know, this is a seminar for Doc. This is Doc's celebration. And down here in Philadelphia, we have people coming who aren't even a part of Sudakas, and they're coming because they love it. I want to honor Doc. They basically don't even know who you are, sir. And there's no way we're going to set up a seminar the night before the seminar 
But that's ridiculous. I said, but I'll tell you what, sir. And I said to him, this is something I've wanted to say to you since Palm Bay, Florida. I said, it's okay. When you come to Philadelphia and we give you the mic, what you should do, and what, in my opinion, my advice, you should go to every Salutist Room seminar that's available to you and get the microphone and talk to these young brothers who love God and Salutist and talk to them and tell them stories that nobody can tell but you because you're the only one that was there at the age of nine. You can tell them stories how it was when you met Moses Powell, how it was when he taught you, the techniques he shared with you, how you took Salukis on the national circuit and became a national champion. How was it when you and Doc were going out demonstrating? And how was it when Doc used to uh, put you on people and, and, and you would just run through them? Nobody can tell those stories but you, so good. And if you do this, these young ones who love Doc and Salukis will ride on their every word because there is nobody that can tell the story that you can tell because nobody had your experience with Doc. And if you do this, you will make a lot of friends. And then you can request to look at some students to bring you in for a seminar. They would love to have you because you are an extension of Dr. Moses' house. You are, and I, I, I said this in Philly when I introduced him, he's Doc, one of Doc's most famous students, and he is our champion. People talk about Bill Superfoot Wallace and, and Jeff Smith and all these other guys and Billy the Jet, but we can say we have Grandmaster Little John Davis, Archie Bruce, Doc's student. So I don't, you know, <laughs> he, his system is committed to And I think that. Organizing and structuring committee you is a big job and a very important job. And Doc wanted to look his talk. Doc wanted to look his representative. Doc was talking about Lucas. Nothing else. However, we are all family. We're in the family of Jiu Jitsu. Doc calls the family of Sir Lucas. You can't say he's not Doc student. You can't say Doc's not uh, Grand Professor Lee's student. We're all family. We're all family. But Doc, no, was, sir. as you asked me earlier, did he say someone was his successor? No, he did not. Mm. Professor, I, I'm going to uh, uh, next question then. And this feeds right into our next question. I'm going to uh, well then, who is Doc's number one? And if it's not, John. Then who? And this is a direct quote from Grandmaster George Logan uh, on our interview, uh, and 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 and, uh, and also uh, Grandmaster Anthony. Uh, although that's not a direct quote from Grandmaster Anthony, he has also publicly stated uh, that if, that if Little John, uh, as far as the, Little John has the largest piece of the Snooker's pie, who has more of the Snooker's pie than Sophia Little John? Who is the first question? Who is Doc number one? Yeah, so if it's, yeah, who is Doc number one if it's not so you know the job? Well, again, I, I, I respect so you know the job. He's our champion. He's Doc's most famous student. But he has committee group. We're talking about some lookers. We're talking about Dr. Moses Doc. We're not talking about committee group. So who is Doc number one student? The one who loves him the most, the ones who, who receive instructions from him and receive the system from him and calls it his system. That's his number one student. You know, how do you define being Dr. Moses Powell's number one student? That should be the question, not who is his number one. How do you define that? It would be the person who is lifting Doc's name up and talking what Doc taught. They should talk the way Doc taught. They should be a people person like Doc. Who do you know that has the attraction? 
the power that Doug has. That's his number one student. Whoever loves Doc and loves Sir Lucas and is teaching Sir Lucas and only Sir Lucas and representing Doc, that's his number one student. Your number one student represents their teacher. Now, if I'm wrong, somebody please tell me. If, 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 if you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Angelo Dundee was Muhammad Ali's trainer. Who was Angelo Dundee's most famous and number one pupil? Muhammad Ali. Who was his second? Who was his second? Number one student. Sugar Ray Little. Sugar Ray Little. Come on, I'm just being real. I'm just being real. You know? Um, come on now. So I'm saying, if, 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 if Moses Powell is my teacher, then he's my teacher, and I'm representing him. So whoever his number one student is, is the one who loves him the most, representing his system. And, and, and as Dr. said, we're talking about Sir So you so if, if, if you wouldn't agree that the one who has the largest piece of the pie, as far as... Uh, I yes, well, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Uh, 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 as far as I now. can't say, listen, no, listen, listen. There is no way I can sit here and say I know what Sophie Little John knew, what's, in, what's, in, what's contained in his head. I can't say that. I don't know his knowledge base, sir. So it, I would be a fool to say that he does, he's not the most knowledgeable one. You know, it's people, I mean, most people think that their teacher is the most knowledgeable one. You know, uh, if I was a student of uh, George Logan, I would say George Logan is uh, the most knowledgeable one because most martial arts teachers are like a father to you, and you look up to them. So I can't say what knowledge Soke has. Soke is a brilliant man. Soke is a very talented man. He's our champion. Hell. Yes. So I can't take nothing. I wouldn't even dream of taking nothing from him. I'm just saying, what are we talking about here? Is this a Sir Lucas Group program? Is this about Doc? Doc's the number one student. How about that? So if you want to know who is the number one and who got more knowledge than anybody, Musa Muhammad got the knowledge. He's number one. And we all get behind that one, we'll be all right. Absolutely. And uh, Professor Lenny, let me assert a real assert. The questions I'm asking, uh, these are the questions that uh, many people are asking and floating around. Although uh, they uh, they being the, the, although they are from me and from uh, uh, our dojo, the warrior within uh, dojo, these are questions that people are asking, and some were submitted uh, directly uh, to me. And were, were, I was told to ask these questions, and I said, "Well, I will." Uh, so I just want to just, just reassert that. Uh, moving on to our next question. What is the, I want you to clear up something that has been uh, a point of contention with a lot of people. And I don't care what a lot of people. I want to know what our founder, Dr. Lucas Powell, said to you from what you know. What is the Lucas rank and title structure, the official one from Dr. Lucas Powell himself to you? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you exactly what Dr. told me about his ranking system. However, again, now since you want to talk about the knowledge base, I would also say, brother, it might be wise if you ask so Sophie Dunjan, Grandmaster uh, Anthony Muhammad, because I'm sure they can touch on that as well. But all I'm doing is telling you what Doc told me. I'm not speaking of my of myself. But this is not what Brother James said. This is what Doc said. His system starts with a white belt, of course. Then there's a yellow belt. Then there's your green belt. Then there's purple belt. Then there's brown, third grade, or third chief. There's brown belt, second grade, or second chief. Then there's brown, first chief. Then there's showdown. And, of course, you know, in black belt, you have 10 degrees. So that's his ranking system. 
from his mouth to my ears. Now I've seen different curriculums with different belt rankings, and, uh, and of course, let's let's be real. There are individuals out there who run a business, and yeah. in that business, they may add hues to their yellow, green. They may even add a, a red or blue belt, and and I can understand that. That's 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 good. But that's not what Doc told me for his rankings. Let again, you can, you can uh, speak with Grandmaster Anthony or Grandmaster O.K. Billy John Davis. I'm sure they can uh, speak on that as well. Yeah, but what about the second part, the title, Dr. Powell's title structure? That's why she, uh, Professor, blah, blah, blah. The ones that you know directly from Dr. Powell. Well, you have Sensei, you have Shihan, you have Junior Professor, you have Professor, you have Chief Professor, and then you have Grandmaster at Ninth Don and Grandmaster at Tenth Don, and then the rank that he holds, which is a doctorate degree. That's it. And, you know, a lot of people like using the title of uh, Kiyoshi, things of that nature. That wasn't the language of some of for Dr. Moses Bow. In fact, I'm not sure, but I don't think I've ever heard anybody ever hold the title of Chief Professor. This is what Doc created in his system. Mm. Mm. You know, a lot of people right. come from uh, Japanese base, so they use a lot of Japanese terms. You know, mm-hmm. Doc used to always say, Brother James, we're not Japanese. However, he thought it was wise for his students to know the Japanese terminology. So when we go abroad and visit other dojos, not only could we understand the language, we could be understood. But we always see one thing most people don't understand, and a lot of people still don't because they don't know. But Grandmaster Anthony can touch on this. Some of this, the foundation of some of this is rooted in the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And that's why we have our magnificent courtesy bow, which looks just like a dua prayer. See, God didn't just create this one day or let me do this. He told me that God, Allah, blessed him with some of this. So when you look at the courtesy bow, it's built off of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You stand at a 45 degree angle. That's not from Mr. Fuji or, or some Japanese master. No, sir. That's from his teaching. We stand on our square and living perpendicular with our hands stretched out as we receive something. Mm-hmm. We're asking for something. And then we're opening up our arm. If you come in, you may not get out. It's a prayer. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. In, in my curriculum, my dojo curriculum, now, can I read to you what I was taught by Doc concerning the courtesy now? Professor James, you can speak and say what you want, sir. Yeah, I don't have my glasses on. I, I pretty much know this by heart. It says the salute yes, bow is one that demonstrates humbleness, respect, peace, and gratitude towards the creator and your fellow man. The position of the Salukasu bow is one of science and discipline. Standing at attention with with your feet at a 45 degree angle on the square. Your hands are out in a servitude and receiving position. As if you're offering yourself to someone and receiving a blessing all in one. Your eyes are looking straight ahead and your head is slightly lower as you bow. In the martial arts, we are taught that you should never take your eyes off your opponent, even when you bow. With the St. Lucas you bow, you're looking directly at your opponent and viewing all that is around you. With your hands and arms wide open, inviting your opponent into a land of no return. We bow to show respect and appreciation to our instructors and to, and to our opponent. When entering and leaving the dojo, and when entering on and off the mat. 
the Seleucus Rule warrior comes in peace and is never the aggressor. But we have the God given right to fight with those who fight with us. True self defense. Also, in the beginning of the Tao, we point one index finger up to the heavens, signifying that there is only one God whose proper name is Allah, one system, one family, which is Seleucus. Then we take our index finger and place it over our heart, symbolizing the realness of the love we have for our God, teacher, and the art of Olympus food. Each one, teach one. Eye to eye, heart to heart. That's from God. And it's rooted in the teachings of Islam. And Doc never hit that. No matter who he taught. In fact, I'll say this. He said the greatest part of the martial arts is the spiritual part. So here's the teaching right here. Don't worship me as your teacher. Don't bow down and worship me. Bow down and worship them but Allah. Class dismissed. Mm. That's it. Yes, sir. Well, since we're talking about the rank structure and, uh, and the, the rank and the title structure, uh, the feed on that, that same question uh, and uh, and, you know, we're eye to eye, we're heart to heart. This is what you see. It's not your problem. But there are a lot of people who say they practice the image. They're not eye to eye, heart to heart. Um, but Professor Tom Curry has a curriculum uh, that I have uh, that is going to be contrary and, and to some of the things you said. And, and I only asked you to speak what Doc told you. But according to Professor Tom Curry, you know, before Doc passed away, Doc wanted him to do his curriculum. And the curriculum that he has is, I think, I think he said 90%, if not 95%, verbatim the way Doc wanted it. Uh, you have any knowledge of, of that? And, and, and I'm sure you've seen the curriculum and judging by the Facebook uh, response to some of them, I know you openly disagree with that. Uh, could you just elaborate to our listeners um, um, without, you know, we're not attacking the public time period just for the sake, you know, just for the, uh, the sake of truth. Could you elaborate on our, li- on our listeners uh, well, about that? Uh, yeah, we'll I'm going to say a little bit of knowledge. Well, I'm going to say I've spoken to Tom Curry about this. I've spoken to Grandmaster Anthony and Grandmaster Bill about this. You know, what I just read to you was taught to me by Doc. And it's in my dojo curriculum. Not my federation curriculum, because I don't have a federation. I got a lot of things in this curriculum. In fact, every belt color that I spoke to you about, I have the meaning of those colors from Doc. In my curriculum. So let's just say white belt curriculum and yellow belt curriculum. In my curriculum, there's the language of Dr. Moses Powell. Uh, in traditional Jitsuru, you have what's called Randori. Well, what's the Randori for Salukis? It's called Touch and Go. Everybody knows that who studied under Dr. Moses so, my thing is, where is Doc's language in these curriculums? I didn't see Doc's language in the curriculum. What is the spinning also together? I know what it is. I've done it. I've seen Doc do it. I don't see that type of language in other curriculum. Now, I know Tom Curry. I've been on that with Tom Curry. I like Tom. Doc told me, so this ain't, you can disagree with me, but you can't call me a liar, because I'm telling you what Doc said. Mm-hmm. Doc said to me, Brother James, I never put this system on paper, because I didn't trust people, certain people, but now is the time. He said, he told me that Tom Curry came to him one time, and Tom was not the first one to do it. Many people have come to Doc and tried to get him to do a curriculum. Tom Curry came to him and showed him a Kippo curriculum, showed him the structure, and said, you can put some Lucas in the same structure. So Doc entertained the conversation, and Doc told me that what he wanted to do was get together with myself, Grandmaster Bill McLeod, he mentioned both states, 
you up. And he mentioned Tom Curry because Tom Curry was one who came to him as well. And he said, we are going to get together and put together a curriculum. In fact, he even said it like this, that he, while we sitting there putting the curriculum together, we're going to use OSE to do the demonstration. For example, face fall. Boom, OSE is going to do the face fall. We're going to document it, et cetera, et cetera. He said, we are going to do this. This was a conversation that Doc had with me in 2001, right before he left to go to Miami, before he left. That togetherness or that curriculum was never put together. So when people say that somebody did, Doc did 90% of the curriculum, and when he left, Tom finished 10% of it, I know that's not correct, and I've got to, I have to tell the truth. Now, mm. let's, let's say you don't want to take my word for it. No problem. Go get Tom Curry's curriculum. Nothing against Tom. I'm just telling you how I see it. I looked at the curriculum. I looked at the curriculum. I saw Tom Curry's name on every page at the bottom. It, to me, looked like he went on the Internet, found a traditional jiu-jitsu school and cut, copy, and paste and put it in there. It's no language or stuff. Look at this picture of the top. You got a picture of Grandmaster Anthony in there, Grandmaster Bill. I don't know if, why that was there, but I called both of them when I saw the curriculum. Because I, you know, I want to know, did you endorse this? Because that's not the language of Dr. Moses Bell. Any, that, that could be anybody's basic jiu-jitsu curriculum. Now, I'm challenging anybody who has seen it. Does it look like some Lucas Root curriculum, or does it just look like uh, a traditional uh, jiu-jitsu curriculum? That's what I'm saying. Mm. The belt ranking system in that curriculum is not what I read to you. And I know for a fact, and I talked to Tom about this as well. White, yellow, green, Purple. Three grades to brown and then show that line. That's Doc's racing system. I don't know what all this other stuff is about. I'm saying we never got together. Now, if Grandmaster Anthony and Grandmaster Bill tell you that they got together with Doc and Tom Curry and they put that curriculum together, I will publicly apologize and I'll shut my mouth. Mm. Yes, sir. Moving on to that next question. What are, what are the fighting form structure in snookers? And what are the key of fighting forms? And who are the, who's the founder of these fighting forms? Uh, for example, uh, someone uh, recently called me and said that uh, Professor Pedro was actually the inventor of the key form <laughs> and Doc saw them and okayed them and put them in the system. Um, what do you do from Doc about this? Uh, uh, fighting form, the structure, and then the peer fighting forms. Well, I knew Professor Pedro and um, the LIB piece with him. Um, I will tell you again what Doc said. Doc told me that he, Moses F. Powell, put the peer forms together himself. And the first person he taught the peer forms to Master Herbie Johnson, he said that he put the team forms together to assist him in using his martial arts in real fighting situations. And that's how the team forms developed. Master Herbie Johnson, if anybody knows who he is, you can call him and ask him. Did Doc teach him the team forms? And was he around when Doc put them together? And he will tell you. I didn't talk to Herbie Johnson, I talked to Doc. That's what he told me. I don't know anything about uh, Professor Pedro doing peer forms and, and he invented them. I don't know nothing about that. I knew what Doc said he created. And the first person he talked him to was Master Herbie Johnson. And how about the Snickers Group fighting form? 
the structure of the schools will try to inform us. And also how the, uh, the order that Doc wanted them taught, uh, and once again, I'm going to stress the order that Doc wanted them taught, uh, did he want the syllabus really short? I mean, the syllabus group uh, fighting forms taught before or after uh, the syllabus group PL fighting forms. And if you can tell us very well, you know about the syllabus uh, group short and long forms. Okay, well, that particular day when we were all in Atlanta, I was asked to come to Atlanta and I was supposed to get a tape from Grandmaster Carol Little Muhammad of the short and long forms, which Doc called throwing forms. He put those forms together after the PFO. He wanted me to learn those forms. I never got the tape. So I kept bugging him about these forms and bugging him to the point where he gave me his copy of the tape. But then he said, Brother James, I got something else for you. Hold off on that. And that's when he started to teach the peer forms again. He had a brother by the name of Gregory McCall from uh, Connecticut show me the peer forms. And then Doc started piecing things together for me. So as far as the structure, I'm going to say to you that it, it would be proper if you knew all the peer forms and you knew all the short forms and if you knew all the long forms, my advice would be teach the PF forms first because they came first. Then teach the short, then teach the long. If you know any of Doc stick fighting drills before, teach them as well and his knife form. A lot of people say, well, we teach the short and long form, but that's because they didn't know the PF forms. Because in the 90s, everybody was doing the short and long forms. The only Three individuals that I know of that were doing peer forms in the 90s, the Grandmaster Veronica in Miami, who I call the Queen of the Snookers, and there's Professor Irving from California, Brother Ted, and Professor Greg McCall. Nobody else that I know of was doing peer forms. Everybody was going to shoot them off. You know, sir, I'm staying on the form. To my next question here. Uh, why, are the, why are the Salucas family members ignoring the known fact uh, Dr. instructed everyone to perform the PL fighting forms the way that you were doing? Isn't this the true? I mean, isn't this the final official version? And, uh, and and just from my personal knowledge, I've seen a uh, uh, video uh, where I believe Jose and uh, you and, I, and um, Professor Sefala, I may be wrong with Professor Sefala, but I remember the video uh, somewhat. But what, what the, the main part of the video that I remember, uh, Professor James, was Doc said this, and I'm going to try to quote him verbatim here, uh, exactly what he said. It. He says, I want... You, you and, and Osei, and I guess you were, you were demonstrating the peer forms. And then Doc said, uh, after you were finished, or maybe how you were doing them, he said, I want the peer forms done the way Brother James does them. And if you have a problem with that, come and see me. Uh, so, now I've seen that. So I, I, my the, the versions of peer forms that I'm gonna learn, that I'm learning and will learn from Professor Safe Law, uh, are gonna be the version that Doc, that I saw Doc say on that video, uh, the ones that Brother James is doing. So those are going to be the ones I'm studying. But why do you think the rest of the Smith's family is ignoring uh, that known fact? Well, I, I can't say that they're ignoring it. Um, <clears throat> but let me, let me go on record and say this. And I, again, I have to give credit where credit is due. Grandmaster Veronica and, Grandma, and the Professor Irving were doing the peer form before I ever knew anything about Moses' power from the Kishwood Jiu-Jitsu. I respect them, I honor them, I learn from them. In fact, 
Grand Master Moralik and I have become ruling folks, and we've talked many times. There was a misunderstanding that took place because I made I, I, I told somebody in private what Doc told me about her doing the peer form. And I left a message on their phone, and they played it for Grand Master Veronica and a lot of other masters, which really was, in my opinion, very improper. It was, a, it was, it was really a betrayal, but it happened. And Grand Master Veronica was upset. However, we had a chance to talk eye to eye. And now, we even talked one time about me coming down to Florida, and we both would do the forms together on film so people could see what Doc taught her and what Doc taught me. Now, there are a lot of people who saw the instructional tape that the tape you were talking about with me and others say, that's not an instructional tape. That was a tribute tape I put together and Doc wanted me to put the forms on film for the family to learn, but we never got to the part where we did the instructional part because Doc left. But I did the instruction part with some bone tie and the peer nerve striking teaching that he gave me was all on this tape. And if you would just watch the tape, I think you'll see that Doc definitely put his hand on that tape. However, when Master Veronica and, and, and Professor Urban, they were doing those forms before I even knew Doc. So I'm not sure. Look, he, didn't even ask me to do the tape. He told me I was going to do it. And he told me he wanted me to do it because he trusted me, he loved me, and he knew that I would do it the way he wanted it done. So if anybody has a problem with me or the tape, that's why he said, come see him. Because he instructed me to do it. He could have picked anybody he wanted to do those films. But he told me to do it. So if you got a problem with the film, it ain't a problem with me. Like I said, you got a problem with your teacher. And it's easy to disobey your teacher when you look at him as a, a, a man who did evil and dirty things, if you understand what I'm saying. So I just simply say, hey, if you want to learn a theater for us, there's an instruction we take out there. And I'm telling you that I learned them and the bunk is from top. There's more bunk I only put basic stuff in there, but if you watch that tape, especially the peer striking part of it, I think you'll uh, like what you see. There, I believe there are people who secretly watch it. They're never going to tell me, brother, I saw your tape and I enjoyed it. But some grandmasters in the system have called me and told me that they saw it and they loved it. And they could tell it was up top. That was enough for me. But even if they didn't say it, there's clips in the film where you hear Doc talking to me as I'm doing the film. So, you know, when, what's his name, uh, Ford put the Model T car out? Mm -hmm. and then, well, when the first Cadillac came out, who would you rather drive, a, a, a 1945 Cadillac or a 2012 Cadillac? <laughs> well said. I think we're over there 2012. <laughs> Yes, sir. All right. All right, Professor. All right, getting, getting back to um, the questions here. Uh, this is a touch of it, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, how, how have people hurt Doc? And what hurt Doc the most? And who has hurt him the most? So we've got a three-part well, question. <laughs> You said the touchy question. All your questions are touchy. In fact, you know, <laughs> re recently there was a, a, a so, hey, brother Dean, rumor out. Before you answer, pardon me, sir. Brother Dean, before you, before you answer, let me answer. Bro. I, I, I had to give you the tough questions because people are calling me uh, 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 softball with Salah Hadid. <laughs> Uh, and they're calling me Diane Sawyer on Sanuka's Brew interview. <laughs> so I, I got to respond to my audience. They want they want more they want tougher and more in depth and more detail. And I think the number one word they want they want clarity with with people yes, in certain positions and things like that. So that's why unfortunately you got caught up. I got uh, a barrage of emails and comments. 
<laughs> yes, sir. Back well, to the question. Back to the question. Oh, okay. Well, you know, recently there was a uh, a report out that I had got shot, and <clears throat> my students really they went crazy until they found me and found out that it was just a lie. There are some uh, individuals in this local area who are in the jujitsu family that I've had some situations with. So a lot of people thought it was true. To make a long story short, after this interview, it may come true. Somebody may shoot me. But that's what <laughs> You, you know. Now, what, what was your question again? How have people hurt the doctor? Yeah, how have people hurt the doctor? And who hurt Doc the most? And well, I, I think I already touched on that, brother. Um, like I told you, yeah. one thing Doc loved was for his students to come together and train. You know, <clears throat> when Doc was physically in our presence, we had differences, a lot of differences. We didn't like each other, some of us, but we still came together on the mat, touched each other, worked each other. After the training, we sat down, took pictures together, and we broke bread together. And then we all went home to our respective locations uh-huh. with the same differences we had when we came. But we came together as one family, son of us. In my opinion, what hurt Doc the most is when those students that you know there's an old saying, as much is given, much is required. I oh, think that's what hurt Doc the most is those who gave so much to and then they turn their backs on that. What hurt Doc the most is, you know, when you say you love somebody, and you get mad, they say better and for worse. But when uh, the report of Doc's personal life surfaced, where was the love, man? When you had down time and got in trouble and was going through hell, Doc was there for you. In fact, I'll tell you like this. Doc was the type of man that if you had a problem and you lived in Miami, Florida, he would call somebody in the Miami, Florida area to assist you, and they would be right there to help you because of love for Dr. Moses Powell. If I had a problem and Doc knew somebody, Somewhere else, he would call them and say, look, man, this is Brother James, this is my main man, this is number call, he got a problem, help him out. That person would call me and help me like they knew me all my life, not because of me, but because of Moses' power. He loved unity. There's a brother who lives in West Virginia by the name of Billy Washington. He got sick or hurt on his job or something. He was in the hospital. And I know Billy, but Doc was calling people all over the country giving them Billy Washington's hospital room number, just call him short love. And Billy Washington called him and he stopped crying because he couldn't believe the love, the phone calls he was receiving. Doc loved unity and he loved to look at family. What hurt him the most is when those who he gave so much to turned their back on him. And those who he talked the most took his system. This is a known fact. It ain't James talking, it's Doc talking. Who are you the most? Those who did just that. Mm. Well said. Well said. All right, uh, Professor, what is the situation? Uh, and I want to give you guys less clarity from what Doc has told you uh, of these two individuals. Uh, Chief Professor Shim and Professor Tan Weir, when it comes to being in the Smith family of Dr. Moses Powell. Say that again, sir. All right. What's the situation with Chief Professor Shim and Professor Tan Weir when it comes to being in the Smith family of Dr. Yeah. Moses Powell? You 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 choose <laughs> you choosing to ask me that question. You know, uh, I, I, from your from your I'm, 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 I'll answer your question, but I'm gonna say this first. Now that's the question. I would say, man, call Glenn after Anthony Muhammad. Someone asked me that the other day, a similar question, 
And I said, man, if you don't take my word, call Grand Master Anthony and Professor Bill. They'll tell you. You know, because, again, you know, I'm just James, you know? What is it that you want to know about that? You what, want, what, what is the specific course, question? What, what, well, what the specific question is, where James, I'm sorry, James, excuse me, was Chief Professor Shim uh, put out of the Seneca's family by Dr. Moses Powell, and was he ever allowed back in and say to Professor Sam Weir? And are they, when, or at least, are they a part of the Seneca's family and Dr. Moses Powell? Okay, I'll answer you, but then I'm also going to say again. Call Grandmaster Anthony and ask him. Yes, sir. If you don't want to take my word. Call Grandmaster Bill. I know Grandmaster Bill won't kill me, but hey, at the end of the day, they know. <laughs> Dr. Moses Powell told me that Shim was out of the family for life. And he revoked his rank. Period. That's that's Doc talk. That's not me talking, but I'm gonna tell you what he said. Because I'm like again, uh, I'm gonna represent Doc and I'm gonna defend him. Yes, sir. It's fuck. Now, you don't have to take my word. You can call the Grand Master. You can call the Kenny Master, they'll tell you. And if they tell you that James don't know what he's talking about, then I will shut my mouth. Mm. And uh, Professor Stan Weir? He's out. According to Dr. Moses Powell, he's out. Good. Now you said for so life. A few people came to me. I said for life. Yes, sir. Both of them. That's what I said. That's what Doc said. Oh, sure. Both. There are individuals who came to me. There are individuals who came to me. To have a weak entrance into Philippines. I will I'll say this because I you know, he'll, he'll tell you, Professor Faith, well, I was a one of I had a seminar, one of many seminars that I had in, in Philadelphia. Professor Faith Block came to me, or had one of his students call me and ask, could he come to the seminar? I said, brother, I'm going to ask Doc. Doc said, he can come to the seminar and spectate, but he can't get on the mat. Professor Faith Block showed up, sat on the mat. He ain't bothered nobody, he kept his mouth shut, he was respectful. Eventually, in time, Professor Sefala was allowed to come back into the Sunukazu family and he rose right back up to good standing and higher. There are other individuals whose names I will not mention came to me as well and asked could they come to a seminar. I called Doc. And Doc said, no, not at this time. I got to see him eye to eye. Nothing I could do. All I could do was ask Doc. So, I'm not saying those other individuals came to me, but I'm telling you I know what Doc said. Mm. Yes, sir. Professor James, I know you don't care what people particularly say or think about you. But one, some of your de uh, detractors say that, that's you, not true. Uh, sir. I do. <laughs> okay. Well, then, well, you know what I mean. It, it, you, well, you know what I mean. Uh, in other words, you're not going to go hang yourself because people don't like you. It's what else? It's what I'm trying to say. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> but they leave you one. Some of your uh, detractors and uh, people to criticize you uh, because, and I think that they may just be from jealousy. And this is my own, my own uh, point of view. Uh, they leave you as a Johnny come lately. Uh, have you have you heard that from people? And, and uh, how, how would you uh, uh, explain that? Is it just them not being comfortable? Would you, do you think it's from a sense of jealousy that those not did publicly say that he, he he that you know that you were you're close to him? Um, what do you well, offer? Well, I'm pretty sure after this interview. I'm going to be called a Johnny come lately even more because the, the more people call me a Johnny come lately, the more people will not listen to 
to what I had to say. But again, it wasn't me, it's what Doc said. I've heard that people have labeled me a Johnny come lately. Oh, he ain't nothing but a Johnny come lately. I take it as a compliment. Because yes, I am a Johnny come lately. I did come late. But I'm thankful to Allah for coming on the island that I did come. I was able to come and train and study under Dr. Moses' power. I'm thankful to Allah that when I came, what he gave me, what I received, I did something with it. And again, I challenge everyone, just watch the Peter Form instruction video, and you'll see what he gave me. Yes, I came late. There are many great masters that were there long before I came around. But I'll say this. Dr. Moses Powell met a man by the name of uh, Grand Professor Lee. When Doc came into that system, Jitsuru, Jitsu Tate was already in existence. Was not Dr. Johnny Kalecki? Were there not people there before him that outranked him, that knew more than him? Sure. But did that stop him from growing and learning? No, sir. The Nation of Islam is founded or, or, or in, put in motion in 1970. The Honorable Minister Farrakhan joined the Nation of Islam in 1955. That's, I believe, 25 years after it was started, but he was able to grow, learn, and be blessed by Allah. So just because a person is considered a Johnny come lately is not a negative thing. People may call me that because they want to discredit me and keep me down to keep themselves up. But remember, a lie only stands strong as long as the truth is put down. But when the truth walks in the room, a lie got to go. So yeah, I'm a Johnny come lately. I don't have a problem with that. But no, nobody has ever come to my face and called me. They said to other people, but I am that. I didn't come into Sanofi until just a few days ago, right? but I thank a lot that I came, and I thank a lot for my, I've been in the martial arts since I was nine years old, but I'm 50 years old, mm -hmm. sir. So when I came, I had a foundation. I was a man when I came, and I could fight when I came. I retired from fighting in 1980. I was the Mid-Atlantic Fighting Champion, right here in Philadelphia. It's on record. Check 78, 79, Karate Illustrated. My name's in there. It's winning championships. That's what I did. Before Sanukas. But when I came, listen, when I came to Sanukas, those individuals that we named earlier, they were already masters in the system. And they're, and, and they're my senior masters. They're my seniors in age. And everything, and I respect all of them, and I learn from them all. I don't try to make myself their equal. I'm just Brother James. In fact, that's what I've always been, Brother James, until Doc told me that from now on, you make sure people call you Professor. But I was always Brother James. So I don't have a problem with being a child come lately. So, all right, I'm just thankful that I came. I'm glad you addressed that. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Well, okay, Professor, we're down for our last three questions, and I'm going to let you go. <laughs> How long have we been on this phone, sir? Wow. <laughs> I don't even want to tell you because I don't want you to get, <laughs> I don't want you to get angry with me. <laughs> but listen, brother, we're going to ask these last three questions, and then we're going to wrap this show up. What happened to the Snookers Root Federation that Professor Tom Curry have and that the Allen brothers are a part of? Were you a part of this organization at one time? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to answer the last part first. No, I was not a part of that federation. Um, what happened to it, um, it, it, it was um, Professor Tom Curry um, ever interviewed on your show, sir? Uh, no, he is actually coming, but I know I do know that's the federation he is still a part of. Oh, oh I'm saying that you might want to ask Professor Tom Curry what happened to it. But mm -hmm. when it first was introduced, I went to one of the first meetings at the church basement where he teaches. <laughs> and all the senior masters were there. And we talked. 
دارن نمیتونن What about Dr. Moses Powell? Uh, what did he have to do with this Smooth Jew Federation? From your knowledge? Nothing. From my knowledge, nothing. Enough said. All right, well, since we're talking about Federation, well, 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 let, me, let me just give credit for credit to you. I respect the Federation Tom Perry for yes, uh, attempting to keep the family together and produce a federation that possibly could keep the family get together. I respect him for that. I commend him for that. Um, I won't go into why I believe it didn't work, but I do respect him for that. I respect anyone who made an effort to keep some of this alive and keep Doc's name alive. So, although I wasn't, I've never joined that federation, I do respect what he did. And yeah, sir, since we're on the title, of, uh, or on the topic, I should say, of federations, what are your views on the United Scriptures Family Association? Uh, which, by the way, uh, we were informed that Cleveland Robinson himself uh, is kicking all, all but three or four senior grandmasters off of the board. Board of Directors and has taken over the USFA himself as chairman. Chairman of Seth. Now, what, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, the USFA, first on the USFA, uh, I guess, uh, the, it has organization and uh, and the news is breaking uh, that Cleveland Robinson, uh, Professor Cleveland Robinson, has taken over as the uh, chairman and has basically just uh, getting rid of, keeping but three or four, he's going to keep like maybe three or four board members and some of the transgressions that are going on over there in the USFA? Well, first I'll say this. I, um, I'm not a part of that federation. <clears throat> um, as far as I'm concerned, and I pray a lot, blessings me to say the proper words, and I hope that what I say is received properly. The way that that federation attempted I think it was the most. If you ask me a question, what hurt Doc and who hurt him the most? Now I got an answer for you. The yes, way this federation was presented to the family, to to the Lucas family, hurt Doc the most. I'm gonna tell you something, uh, brother Faloji. If Doc, Doc is not physically a mother, but if Doc was here, he put his foot up a whole lot of people behind behind the way that went down. But that was the most wicked, disrespectful, satanic crap I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of bad things go down in St. Lucas, but this one was the worst. I didn't like it. I don't like it. And I wouldn't care if a trillion people joined the Federation. I would never join that Federation, especially the way it was attempted to be uh, put together. How do you go on YouTube and Facebook and speak that way? And all you did was hurt the family. All you did was hurt the family. There have been many people who tried to put federations together, organizations together, representing doctors for us. Even if it wasn't called for doctors. But I ain't never heard no wickedness come out of nobody's mouth. All they said was, all are welcome to join, and we want to represent uh, the family of jiu-jitsu. But to get up there and start talking all this crazy stuff about what you're going to do, and this, that. first of all, let me say this to you. Nobody called me and said, Brother James, listen, we're trying to put together this. Tom Curry, I said, I respect him. He called me. He called everybody. He called a meeting to try to structure something. I respect that. But nobody called me and said, Brother James, we're trying to put this together. We're trying to do this to, to uplift the name of Moses Powell and to earn some look at No, I'm going to tell you what it was about. It was about money. They thought that mm. they could shut 
individuals down. And to be honest with you, they only sent letters, threatening letters, disrespectful letters to people who they felt was making money and had good business sense. Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad every year has a very successful seminar in Chicago, Illinois. I, since 1994, have been having successful seminars in Delaware and in Philadelphia. Doc was coming down and the family was coming down. We had large numbers. Grandmaster Anthony brings in large numbers. Dr. Phil Shanique brings in large numbers annually. Grandmaster Bill McLeod does something in New York. And he brings in numbers. Professor Sakala and I do things and bring in numbers. We are the, and, and Sophie Littlejohn has his committee group uh, celebration once a year, somewhere around October. Do you know, nobody called me and asked me to join anything to be a part or help, nothing. You know what I got? A threatening letter. They want to know how much money I'm making off of my DVDs and the pick doc's name, picture, and image off my website. What kind of satanic mess is that? You want me to join something? You can't teach me a front kick, a roundhouse, a hook kick, a axe kick, back kick, nothing. No more kidding you, I was nothing. What you going to teach me? You going to stand before the world and act like all of a sudden you love doc so much and you going to protect his name and image and all you did was divide the family more than it was already divided. And like I said, we had differences and some of us didn't even like each other, but we still had unity and we came together. And there ain't no system out there that can stand up next to the family of Salukas and the family of Jujitsu. I don't care mm -hmm. what kind of division we had, but what they did was that hurt Doc. I'm going to send Grandmaster Anthony a letter talking about we want to know how much revenue you bring in from your seminars. What kind of what kind of love is that? I never did nothing like that. So I would never join that federation. I don't want nothing to do with that federation. And I feel as though it was wicked, disrespectful, and if God was around. Somebody be in trouble, and including Cleveland Roberts. Because if you know Doc was here, he wouldn't be making no move like this. Now I said, "That's mm. right, that's right." All right, Professor, we have reached our last question, and then I will let you go, brother. And that's it. Uh, I mean, I've said this before. Before we end the show, I want to make it clear that each and every one of us, the Sadiqus Group family members and the non Sadiqus Group family members, uh, with this question, and it could be redundant, but I just think at the end of the interview, this is what we should have. This is the question that needs to be uh, answered one more time. All right, who is the present head of Sadiqus Group Jiu Jitsu? Before I answer that, um, you said this is the last question? This is the last one, bro. Okay, well, first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity um, to answer your question. And I know I'm going to be in a lot of trouble with a lot of people, but somebody had to stand up and say what needs to be said. Somebody had to stand up and say what needs to be said. So I guess I'm here. Again, I thank you. I, I think your show is very good. Um, at first, you know, I thought that, you know, you should be more cautious who you bring on. But you know what? Freedom of speech, right? Yes, sir. The family of uh, jiu-jitsu, the family of Samukis, is important to me, the unity is important, but you cannot establish unity based on a lie. You cannot have true unity if you don't understand real eye to eye. 
Everything that I said, I will stand before anybody and say it to them. And most of the stuff that I said, I've already had personal conversations with those individuals. I told them exactly how I felt. I feared no one but a law. And I'm just thankful and appreciative for the opportunity just to be able to speak. I know I said some things that I probably am going to get in trouble for, but it's okay. Because I'm telling you now, I'm going to defend Moses' power and I'm going to stand up and say what needs to be said. I've been quiet long enough. And when this association, family association came about, I was really ready just to walk away from the whole thing. I was done with the, the, the family jujitsu altogether. I was just going to just teach my little class and, and, and leave it alone, you know? I even thought about just calling it choir stone jujitsu. Mm-hmm. The doc would have put his foot up my behind if I were a cat. Okay. Yes, sir. So to answer your question, who is the head of Sanukas at the present time? Dr. Moses Bowers. And if we all would just come together and put Doc first, put him out front, and get busy, and let the light of Sanukas shine, we can take over the whole martial arts world. Somebody will be the senior man. Come on, that's obvious. But Doc is the head. He has to be the focal point. He has to be the focal point. But somebody will be in charge. Somebody will be leading the way. That's just natural. But Doc has to be the focal point. And Aikido, O Sensei Nishika is the focal point. Tonakushi in his system is the focal point. Am I right or am I wrong? Somebody yeah, else will lead right. the way. Somebody will lead the way. But that is the focal point. Elijah Muhammad, the honorable Elijah Muhammad, is the head of the nation of Islam. Who's leading the way right now? Mm. The man who loved him the most, who stood up and defended him when nobody else wanted to. The man who stood up and used the name Nation of Islam when everybody wanted to call it World Community of Al Islam of the West. Just like it is with the nation, so shall it be with Salukas. Nobody wants to call Salukas Salukas and talk to Doc the Moses Power. They wanted to call it something else. Well, Doc is the female. And whoever is going to be the person who leads the way is going to be the person who loves Doc enough to stand up and make that sacrifice and say, you know what? I'm leading the way for some Lucas and Doc, and that's sufficient. I don't need nothing else. But some Lucas is some Lucas. That's going to be the person who leads the way, but Doc will be the head. She'll always be the head. That's my answer. Oh, oh. All right, well, 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 I'm um, we're on the line, or on the air with Professor James Sims of the Quiet Storm Dojo. Uh, Professor James Sims, uh, please tell the people once again your website, uh, your dojo, in case people are in the area and they want to study Dr. Moses Powers, uh, Sumo Jiu Jitsu. And uh, also, um, uh, if they have a question or something they want to say to you, uh, the, you know, to call you directly uh, if, they, if they have a disagreement or something with, 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 with what was said today, or if they just seriously just want to talk to me. Have, tell the people how to get in contact with you. Uh, do I need to okay. Yes, sir. My website is quietstormdojo.com or That's D-R Moses Pal. No period. My phone number and the address of my dojo is right there on the website. If you care to view our commercial, you can go to Quiet Storm Dojo on YouTube and you also can view a clip of Dr. Moses Powell in 1981, along with uh, Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad doing a magnificent uh, demonstration. And everybody knows me. I don't bite my tongue. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. You can call me. 
you know, you can disagree with me, but, you know, again, I'm telling you what Doc said. So if you want to call me, you're welcome to. If you want to sit down and have coffee and talk, if you want to get on the mat and train, I'm, I'm humble enough to receive any instruction that you have. If it comes from Doc, I will receive it. If it comes from something else, I will receive it as well. Because, you know, it's a big field out there. And, you know, as Paul says, you know, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. So if you have something and it's going to benefit me, I will receive it. I will humble myself. So feel free to call. Yeah, absolutely. And also, also uh, uh, is there a link or something to the DVD on the PO forms? Uh, is that also on your website? Yes, sir. For people that, people that may be interested in the PO form, the DVD? If they go to my website, they'll be able to um, purchase the DVD. Awesome. All right, well, we just finished interviewing uh, Brother James Sam, uh, Brother James Professor James, as I should say, of Sanuka's Group uh, Jiu Jitsu, uh, the representative of Dr. Moses Powell, and one of Dr. Powell's uh, dearest friends. Uh, this was, this interview was brought to you today by Sinjokai.com, uh, your premier Sinukas Roots Jiu Jitsu Dojo locally here in Atlanta, Georgia. I want to say thank you to uh, Professor James Sims, and uh, I want to say especially thank you for standing in there uh, for some of these tough questions that, and I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, I hope you ask other people questions like that, sir. Well, brother, listen, after I've after, 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 <laughs> you have my word, uh, that, that, that we're going to challenge uh, people's uh, uh, thought, definitely, on this show. But I want to thank you. We're down to our last 30 seconds. I want to thank you for the, for the interview. And uh, and just check in Facebook. You can go to sinjokai.com and click on my Facebook page, and you can hear all the, the interviews uh, from the past. I think this is our 28th or 29th interview. And... Uh, and if you want to hear this interview again, just simply go to our blog talk station, and uh, Professor James' interview is right there. Uh, Professor James Sims, I want to go ahead and take the college and tradition of Snooker's Root, and if you can go ahead and, and, uh, and uh, lead us off, please. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I, 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 heart to heart. I, I, heart to heart. Us, each one, teach one, and remember what today is, please. Don't forget that. It's birthday. Oh, that's correct, sir. I, 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 I,